behind me is a Mini. And if you're wondering why it looks slightly different, it's because this is the all new third generation model. And it's certainly grown up a lot since the first BMW Mini arrived back in 2001. <laughs> For starters, it's 10 centimetres longer, 4 centimetres wider, and 1 centimetre taller than the outgoing model. Yet, it still has that distinct mini look, with minimal overhangs and chintzy design cues, which, of course, you can personalise with a variety of styling options. One of the most important new features on this third generation Mini is its completely fresh set of engines. Now they're all turbocharged and so in the Cooper D you've got a 1.5 litre turbo diesel and it will return over 80 miles per gallon, yet it'll do 0 to 62 miles an hour in just over nine seconds. So it's a little bit quicker than before. Now in the Cooper, you've no longer got a naturally aspirated engine. It's a 1.5 litre three cylinder turbo petrol, 0 to 60 time falls by over a second to just under eight seconds, yet it'll still return over 60 miles per gallon. Now this one is the Cooper S, as you've probably gathered, on account of the bonnet scoop and the S badge there. It no longer has a 1.6 litre turbo, it's got a 2 litre turbo for the first time and it's got a bit more power, 189 brake horsepower, 0-60 to 60 for the first time is below 7 seconds, so it will sprint to 62 miles an hour in 6.8 seconds, yet economy is still good, 50 miles per gallon. Mini has increased the range of standard kit over the outgoing model. What's more, all cars now get new LED daytime running lights as standard, though all LED headlamps are available as an option. Now one of the big changes on the new Mini is the increase in interior quality and so there's more soft touch plastics about the place and it generally all just feels posher inside. They've rearranged some of the buttons as well so the window switches they're no longer down here they're where they should be on the door. You've also got a new starter switch there and it pulses when you put your finger near it and you turn it on and the big change though for me is the fact that this central pod is no longer used for the speedo or the key driving information is there right in front of you in your line of sight. Instead this houses LEDs. Can you see? There you go. Look, they're coming on. Now they can be used to give you certain information. So let's say you're reversing. It can actually flash red to tell you that you're getting close to the object behind you. The new Mini now gets lots of kit you only used to get on larger BMWs. For instance, you can get a similar iDrive system with touch sensitive pad for inputting destinations to the sat nav. Also, the Mini is available with adaptive suspension for the first time and when you put the car in sports mode using the new rotary switch by the gear gator, the ride stiffens up. There's also an eco mode for the first time too. However, despite all these updates, inside the Mini still feels distinctly like a Mini. It will still feel like a Mini for rear passengers as well. I mean, you do get a couple of centimetres more knee room, which does make a difference, but yeah, it's, it's still no VW Polo back here. The boot is more of an improvement though. It's 30% bigger than before, and at 221 litres, it's about the same size as a Nissan Dukes. And if you want, you can get an optional adjustable floor. So then, the new Mini has grown up in more ways than one. However, that also applies to the price because the Cooper starts from £15,300, which is 400 quid more than before. However, you are getting more car for your money.